Hello, thanks ever so much for watching my vlog. Um, I've got quite a few new followers at the minute, which is lovely. Thanks ever so much for joining. So you might or might not know that I've been working at education for 30 years. And in about a week and a half, I, I'll be leaving. Um, I've decided to, to go so I can concentrate on the painting and on Mrs. Bertimus. And it's been a tricky, uh, a very tricky decision to make. I absolutely love teaching. Um, this this video is is showing you the, the the final end of year art foundation exhibition that our students put on, and that I'm very privileged to be part of the team that deliver that course. I absolutely love the art foundation course. I think it's a hugely pivotal year in a creative student's life and I remember when I went to study it uh, about 300 years ago um, it completely changed my life it opened up my eyes to the fact that you can live creatively and that there are opportunities and yeah it was it was transformative and I have been privileged for a fair number of year, years now to have helped uh, as part of an amazing team, um, help students on the way. I'm I'm going to miss all the staff that I work with. Um, this is really hard. The creative arts department, are like my second family, it's just starting to hit home that I'm going to not be part of it, but. I think it's the right decision. I want to thank all the students past and present that I've taught. I just want to say that I have learned a lot more from you than you ever could have learned from me. And I want to thank you all. Wish you all the very, very best. Um, anyway, before <laughs> I didn't know I was going to get so emotional. Before I start crying into my cup of tea, um, I'd like you to show you this year's Art Foundation end of year show. It was held at Fountain Arts, um, run by the wonderful Mr Burkett, who strangely in a cyclical way, as things always happen, was in my very first uh, first year A-level group when I started teaching at the Sixth Form College 22 years ago um, and I am immensely proud of everything that he's achieved and immensely proud to be a friend of his. Midi just wants to join in now. There you go. Um, anyway, I'm waffling. I'm going to show you the show. This year's students, you've been amazing really really well done we're all so proud of you and i hope you all enjoy the show i'm at fountain arts and this is the last day of the art foundation end of year show and i just wanted to take the time to document it um, before it's taken down, um, which is really sad. But I, I, I'm so proud of the students. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to record everything and uh, share it with you because I think they've done incredibly well. Um, it's a wonderful stage of a student's life just before they go off for uh, employment or apprenticeship, adventures or uni. And they've all just been amazing and have, have all come such a such a long way through sheer hard work and dedication and well done to you all and yeah let's have a look so here I'm right at the back of the gallery in the darkest room which is perfect for projections um, such as this one which has been produced by one of our photography students who has been uh, looking at the male gaze uh, and now we're stepping into the main part of the gallery all right so this is the kind of back third of the exhibition 
and we've got fine art here. This is a series of work about memory and loss of memory. And here we have a diptych about how animals should be honoured and how everything is connected together. should honour our ancestors and animals and creatures that enrich our lives and here is a shrine uh, which is called Old Bone Mother which accompanies the diptych and here we have a series of paintings about the physical and spiritual effects of light and this painting is about hubris and becoming godlike and overpowering. This is a very large canvas. Uh, here is a really interesting installation about fossilization and what fossils we leave at the end of our lives and throughout our lives. Um, and this student has tried to crystallize and fossilise items from her past um, and also you can see the passing of time this mud cake that is going mouldy it's becoming more interesting by the day um, and a beautiful abstract painting based on the crystallisation process a filing cabinet categorizes different stages of her childhood so it's about losing teeth and we have this beautiful solidified doll's dress here we have some fashion and textiles based on Tattooing, piercing and body adornment, but also became very architectural. Lovely photo shoot. Here is a series of um, scanographies uh, based on a model of an amusement park. A student had made very scary uh, recreation of a primary school classroom uh, which is the basis of a proposed kind of graphic novel where very creepy things happen <laughs> here is an illustration students work based on cautionary fairy tales and the books are beautifully bound and illustrated. Stunning work. Graphic design. A community called Ponytails for young people who were interested in horses and want to create their own little group. Um, really nicely branded and some fantastic merchandise that's being created and some wonderful graphics and fashion styling. The whole of this collection um, was based on the steelworks and the type of workwear that the steelworkers would wear. Um, not only did this student produce her own jewellery, um, she also embellished the clothing, created the logo and the graphics and then did the fashion styling. Um, so you can see she's worked incredibly hard and look at the lovely details like on the zip tag there where she's used wire work for her logo. 
this student was incredibly ambitious. She uh, wrote and illustrated a short story and she made a huge concertina book. We'll see the other side in a minute. And we have really interesting uh, textiles work here, <coughs> which are weavings based on uh, water pollution. Um, that is a, a real environmental problem connected with the fashion and textiles industry. Um, really interesting that she wove pipe in and trapped liquids in um, and used a really wide range of completely recycled materials. Oh, hello there. <laughs> so just walking around. And now we get to see the other side of the giant concertina book. Um, which had quite a surreal, magical um, quality to it. Uh, it's very theatrical as well. Um, an incredible piece of work. Um, really, really enjoyed uh, watching that kind of emerge in the exhibition. There was a lot of hard work putting that together. Um, we have a graphic student who has created these beautiful uh, tiles and her work was based on um, the ocean and especially uh, jellyfish. Um, we have conceptual artwork here and both of these pieces were based on artificial intelligence and how if we understood and, and if the process was transparent how we might feel less threatened by um, the growing presence of artificial intelligence. Here we have another range of conceptual artwork um, based on uh, relationships and um, how uh, kind of narcissistic qualities in relationships and, and that sense of um, unbalance. She also looked at wordplay so here you can see she's kind of created a film and an installation based on the saying walking on eggshells. What was really interesting is on the private view, people were literally walking and crushing on the eggshells, um, but she's produced clay, installation, paintings, a huge amount of work. I really love the title of this body of work by a fashion styling and marketing student. It's called, Don't Put Me On A Pedestal Or I Might Fall Off. And she produced a zine, uh, which she styled, and it was all about how females in society are kind of forced to follow this idealised way of behaving in, you know, how to be a lady, how, how you should be feminine, etc. And she really explored that idea and that is why that picture's on the floor, off the pedestal, love that. Uh, we've got a photography student here who produced a beautiful installation. It was all about light and the uplifting effects of light and colour um, and movement. Um, and you can really kind of feel the joy in the work. Here's a fashion design student and she combined uh, science fiction, um, insects with e um, exoskeletons and uh, granny crochet. Uh, put them all in the mix and made this most amazing uh, collection. I absolutely love her balaclavas as well, um, her printed balaclavas. Um, it just, again, all of this work just shows the completely different approaches to all the students, um, how they use their imagination, how they helped each other and inspired each other. I'm so excited to see what they do in the next step of their creative adventure. Here we have a fine arts student um, this was about growing up in a small village, but it was about combining her personal experience with the stories of a neighbour who had lived there all of her life and her family before that were farmers. And even before there were tractors, they would have horses. And she sat and talked about her, her memories and this work was created. So this piece is called Bacon Bedroom because it was about a story of at Christmas when they had to kill the pig and they would live off the land and, and live off that meat for the rest of the year. Um, and the pig would have been hung in a cupboard like this. So 
there are lots of very personal artifacts. Um, the student designed bacon uh, wallpaper, which you can see just on the left hand side, hanging in there. And she hung Yorkshire puddings instead of pigs inside the wardrobe because that was the food that she associated with her family. And these rats had to do with another story from the neighbour about how when she worked in the field, she would have to um, tie string in the bottom of her trousers so the rats wouldn't run up her legs. So these are rat pomandas hanging, <laughs> hanging in the wardrobe. Um, yeah, we have lots of interesting conversations during the foundation course. Um, and we, we just want the students to completely express themselves and to push their ideas. And they've just been so brave and courageous. And, you know, I, I don't think we've ever had anyone making uh, kind of sculptural pieces out of Yorkshire puddings before. We've had such, such an interesting year. Um, this is the outside of the painted wardrobe. Um, I do love that pig's face. I really do. Um, she also wrote a poem, which was about her job that, that she now has in the village, so her experiences of working in the, in the village. And then this really large painting is combining both of their experiences of working. So it's about the student working in the pub, but it's also about her neighbour who used to work on the land and she referenced the horse or as the neighbour called it, the oss, because she's uh, got a very broad Lincolnshire accent. And this is the final painting um, about that rather horrible childhood habit of picking scabs. <laughs> um, but again, really large scale, ambitious pieces of work and I just couldn't be prouder of all the students. It's been an incredible just year. I just want to say thanks ever so much for watching the vlog. Um, sorry that the dog's bite. I, I can't, I've been waiting for ages for her to stop, but she's having a, uh, she's having a dinner time rant at the postman. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna end for quite a while yet. Um, anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, and um, I'm sure you'll agree they've been an amazing bunch of creative students. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, could you please possibly consider subscribing? If you, if you won't mind, I'm a bit cheeky asking, but if you enjoyed it, that would be lovely. Um, and hopefully see you soon. Thanks ever so much. Bye.